on the quick check. The first one, you had to graph the linear inequality shown. So this should have started at positive 3, gone up 1 to the right 2 as many times as possible, down 1 to the left 2 as many times as possible. This should have been a dashed line. If you wanted to, you could just leave it as a dotted line instead of making little dashes in between. Either or, it doesn't matter. And then this was shaded above, which should be this area right here. And then someone give me one possible solution that would have worked for this one ordered pair that would be a, considered a solution. Find one ordered pair in the shaded area that would work. I see. Five negative four. Five negative four? Or, um, hmm. We can still go with well, We can still go with five, but choose a different number. Anyone? Five, six. I think that would work. It's like right in there, so I think so. So I must just double check this to make sure. This is very good in the top of the This is 2 plus 5. This is 2 plus 5. So that works, yes. So that would be a solution. 5, 6. All right, questions on that first one? Remember that you can always double check yourself algebraically, put it back in, see does this work. For the second one, you needed to solve and then graph. So get rid of your 6x. Divide both sides by negative 5. Your sign would change direction. This would become a positive six fifths and a negative two. So we would start at negative two, go up six to the right five. If we went down six, it would be off the graph. So you can do that one if you want, but you don't have to. This would be a solid line. And it would be shaded below, so everything is down here. Questions on that one? For the very last one, they give us a point, they give us an inequality. How do we know that this point is a solution? What could we do here? What do we think? How would we determine, is this a solution or not? So if I were to put these back in here, this would be 3 times 5 over 3 minus 4 times negative 1 fourth is less than 6. I would simplify and see, is this a true statement or not? This would just become 5. This would become a positive 1. Is 6 less than 6? Is this a true statement? No. So because it is not a true statement, it is not a solution. All right, today we're going to talk about the very last lesson in inequalities, which is systems of 
Um, which means Friday is your quiz. So you also have your review with you. All right. Um, first, let's talk about what systems of inequality is going to look like. So the graphing stuff we just did on Monday, it's basically going to be that, but twice. So like your systems of graphing, but inequalities. So you'll have two inequalities graph on the same graph. For this, I would recommend using two different, either writing utensils, colors, something, to show the two different um, systems, the two different inequalities. So that could be pen and pencil, pencil and color pencil, pen and highlighter, two different color pencils, something. Um, or you can just use your pencil and maybe shade different directions. That way we can see the difference. So the steps are the same. Make sure it's in slope intercept form. Um, the step two is not necessarily necessary. Uh, plot your y-intercept, use your slope, determine if it's going to be a dashed or solid line. That is the same as before. And then the shading is also the same as before. Below the graph is, or for less than or less than or equal to is below. Greater than or greater than or equal to is above. Um, the first three graphs on here are fine, but on your paper they're a little small, so we'll just skip to this bottom one. So we would need to graph both of these. If you need color pencils or want color pencils or rulers, there are some in the colorful tray. Trays. Right. So for this first one, we would need to solve this before we could graph it. Add 3x to both sides. So we have 5y is less than 3x plus 10. Divide everything by 5. We have y is less than 3 over 5x plus 2. Graph that one. So start at positive 2, go up 3 to the right 5, down 3 to the left 5. Would this be a dashed or a solid line? It would be dashed, yes. I'm assuming those are both the ones. And then for this one, would this be shaded above or below? Shade above or below? Mm -hmm. So below would be under here. And you go like this. Okay. On the same graph, we're going to shade the other one. So start at negative 5. Our slope is negative 2, so up 2 to the left 1 as many times as possible. And down 2 to the right 1 as many times as possible. Would this be dashed or solid? Mm -hmm. 
And then would this one be shaded above or below? Above. So again, if you're not sure, look at your wire and sap draw up and down arrows. Above would be up. So I'm going to go like this for this shading just so I see that it's different. They are going to overlap. They are going to intersect. Your overlapping area would be the solution area. So as you start to shade, maybe your pencil, you can't really tell um, which shading is which if you want to highlight that section so I, so you know, so that I know, this is your overlapping section, you can do that. If you can clearly tell um, which section is overlapping, then that's fine. Then for your order pairs, they have to fall in that overlapping shaded area, not just one of them, in order to be a solution. So would negative two, negative two work? No. One, negative one? Yeah. Yes. One, one? Yeah. Yes. Two, five? No. Falls in one, but not the other, so no. And six zero. The difference with systems is if it falls on the lines, like both of them, maybe right here, if that was a whole integer, you will have to check it algebraically because it might work for one and not the other. If they're both dashed lines, it's not going to work for either. If one is solid, one is dashed, it could work for both. It could not. It depends. If they're both solid, it should work no matter what. Questions on that one? Okay. Um, I don't know if this is the next page or a couple of pages from now, but find this page. Um, I know on your number two, it's not shaded well. Three and four are okay, I guess. But this is the shaded area, so if you want to slightly shade that in so you see it. This is very similar to when we were writing the inequality for just regular graphs. Now we just have to do it twice, so those same rules apply. So let's do number one. Solid line will be easier. We can find what the y-intercept is. We know that's four. Find your slope. Look at where it crosses grid lines exactly. See if it follows all the way through. It looks like it's following all the way through, but I just want to make sure. So our slope here would be what? One. Negative one. So you put negative one x or just negative x. Right? And then for this one only, is this shaded above or below? Mm -hmm. Because it's solid, that would be less than or equal to. Then we'd have to do the same thing for the other one. So for the dashed line, our y intercept is at negative 2. It looks like our slope is 1, but just double check that it is 1 all the way through. Sometimes it looks like it's 1, but it's really like 
three fourths or four fifths or something weird like that. That is the case. So then our slope here would be 1x, 1, and then x. It's a dashed line, so it's going to be strictly greater than or strictly less than. For this line only, is this shaded above or below? Above. So that would be greater than. It also says state a solution, so someone give me one order pair that would fall in the shaded area. Right. We're just going to do a couple more, and then any you guys want to see, go over, and then you'll have time to practice. Questions on this before we move on? Go to the next page. Um, next two pages. Skip the instructions. We'll come back to that. This page. Right. So for a system of inequalities, it's two or more linear inequalities, just like a system of equations. The solution is the overlapping region. Of points that satisfies both inequalities. We're just going to do a couple of these. Starting with one. Both of these we need to solve before we can graph them. So we would need to subtract x. I'm going to kind of do these at the same time. So for the first one, we have y is greater than negative x minus 1. For the second one, we have to get rid of the negative 1 in front of it. Divide everything by negative 1. Your sign would change directions. Graph those two. So I'm going to start with the blue since I'm already there. Negative 5 is where we would start. Your slope is positive 1, so up 1, right 1, as many times as possible. Fill up the graph. It will be a lot of points. Since this would be a dashed line, but the points are so close together, I'm not going to try and fit little dashes in between. I'm just going to say it's dotted instead and draw arrows at the end. This would be shaded below. I'm going to just draw lines that look like this. And then graph the other one. The other one is starting at negative 1. That's a slope of negative 1. So up 1, left 1, as many times as possible. Fill up your graph. Again, a lot of points. This one would also be dashed, so I'm not going to put little dashes in between all the dots. Just draw arrows at the end. 
This would be shaded above. I'm going to draw vertical lines. Right. And then just so you can see clearly my overlapping region. would be that section right there. So if you need highlighters or want to highlight your overlapping, there are some back there. Do you have any questions on this one? The biggest thing with these are making sure you graph everything correctly and shade that way your overlapping section is correct. Okay. Yes. Let me get this up. All right. Um, turn this over. We're going to do number seven on the back. intercept form so you just need to graph them both. I'm going to start with this first one. Start at positive six. We can't really go up five so let's go down five and to the right one as many times as possible. This would be a dashed line. Shaded below. So below would be underneath here. So all of this. And then do the other one. Y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. So start at negative 1. Go up 2 to the right 1 as many times as possible. And down 2 left 1 as many times as possible. This would be a uh, solid line. Sorry. Shaded above which would be up here. So they almost overlap everywhere, but not at the same time. That would be the section where they overlap. Do we have any questions on that or this in general? Before um, you give me any sorry problems that you want to see, go over. Find the calculator page that I had you flip, pa flip past. Go grab your calculator if you don't already have it. Reset it.
And we're just going to use the two examples that are already clear in step three. So as we did last time, go to apps, next to math. Find your n equals. Once you're on n equals, hit enter, and then enter again. And then we're going to make the first one less than 3x plus 2. So if this is hovering over the equals and we need less than, you're going to hit alpha and then whichever button you want. So alpha window would get us the less than. And then put in 3x plus 2. And after you've done that, go to the next one. Make sure you're hovering over the equals again. This one needs to be greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to is above graph. So we would hit alpha graph. Remember that in this mode, you can't use fractions, so you have to use parentheses. So this says negative one half x minus four. The negative one half is in parentheses. The x minus four is outside. Once you have those two in, hit graph. Now mine, you'll be able to really see it. Yours, you'll just see two sets of black lines. Um, but you'll be able to see that overlapping section. If you want to see different things, um, shades, I think. Yeah. So if you hit alpha y equals to get into shades, you'll see these options. Right now it's on the original shading, so you can see both. Um, one of these is better than the other. I'm going to play with both. I don't remember which one. So this was the first one. This shows just the overlapping section. This is better than the second one. I'll show you why. I'm going to go back into shades, alpha y equals, and do number two. This we don't want. That doesn't help you at all. So the first one or the third one, not the second. Right, and then as I showed you last class, you can also use Desmos while you're practicing. Okay. So in these notes, look through all the problems we did not do. Find any you want to see, have questions about, want to go over, anything. Look through your problems, make sure you don't have any questions you want to see, go over, have questions about. Calculator questions, we could do another calculator problem again. Well, on this page. Any others? Right, so we'll do 12 on this page. Ignore the application because we're not doing that. Um, and then you'll have time to practice on your own. Okay. So 
So both of these inequalities need to be solved. Whether you do that simultaneously or separate does not matter. Get rid of your x. So we have for the first one, negative 2y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 12. I'm going to just do this for now. Divide everything by negative 2. That inequality would become y is now less than or equal to a positive 1 half x minus 6. Whether you solve and then graph or solve both and then graph both, that order does not matter as long as you have both. So we would start at negative 6, go up 1 to the right 2 as many times as possible, down 1, left 2 as many times as possible, this would be a dashed line. Then do the same for the other one. Get rid of x. Divide all the sides by 2. So we have y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x minus 4. And then graph. So we start at negative 4. Slope is negative one half, so up one, left two as many times as possible. This is also a solid line shaded below. Your overlapping section would be this small triangle down here. Any others we want to see go over have questions about? So, you guys have the rest of these practice problems to try. You have all of your Khan Academy, the ones that are due this week, the ones that are due next week, on graphing, on writing, on systems. You have your review in the all the papers that I passed out. Your quiz is next class. Be practicing everything so that you're ready for your quiz. Um, and then I'll be walking around if you have questions.